All right, people, we are live on the YouTube. I'm Dave Rubin, and we've got another Friday panel extravaganza for you. Joining me today are the author of Why I Couldn't Stay Silent, David Harris Jr., founder of America's Frontline Doctors, Dr. Simone Gold, and host of Stu Does America on Blaze TV, Stu Bergery. Welcome to the Rubin Report, everybody. Thanks, Dave. Thank you, Dave. So glad am, to be here. I am glad to have you guys. I've uh, wanted to have you all on. Well, Stu, you were on once before, but I've wanted to have uh, Simone and David on. So long overdue. Uh, we're going to do a little recap of the week. And unfortunately, because this is America in 2021, it's a lot of, a lot of race stuff. Uh, and then, of course, some COVID stuff. Uh, let's start, though. There was a clip that went viral earlier in the week. Uh, former President Barack Obama <laughs> was being interviewed and basically made light of critical race theory, which, as we're live streaming this right now, is the number one trend on Twitter. Uh, but he's not having much of it. Let's take a look. I also think that there are certain right wing uh, media venues, for example, that monetize and capitalize on stoking the fear and resentment of uh, a white population that is witnessing a changing America and seeing uh, demographic changes and, and do everything they can to give people a sense that um, uh, their way of life is threatened and that people are trying to take advantage of them. And we're seeing it right now, right, where uh, you would think with all the public policy debates that are taking place right now that, you know, the Republican Party would uh, be engaged in a significant de debate about uh, how are we going to deal with the economy and what are we going to do about climate change and what are we going to do about, lo and behold, the, the single most uh, important issue to them apparently right now is critical race theory. Who knew that that, <laughs> that was the threat to our republic? So it's quite an extraordinary clip, actually, because he's making light of really the set of ideas that is just running rampant through the country right now and destroying all of our institutions. Uh, Harris, I have, according to my paperwork here, you are black. Is that correct? <laughs> well, yeah, I, I'm definitely a member of the black community. But actually, like Obama, we, we have white mothers. My mother is of Irish descent. So while I've never been accused of being a white person, uh, obviously, I'm a part of the black community. Um, the one thing that uh, that stands out to me with Obama is the fact that, A, he's trying to downplay the attack that's going towards our children. Mm -hmm. Critical race theory at its very core um, is is absolutely racist. It's it's teaching and wants to teach our kids to look at other kids around them and people, adults, and judge them based on the color of their skin. Um, it's evil, it's abhorrent, and it absolutely is a threat to the foundation of this country because our, chi our, kill our kids, our children, are the next generation. They are the bedrock of this country. So let me get this So for him to downplay it like that's disgusting. So you're telling me that we shouldn't be judging based on the color of skin and we shouldn't think, <laughs> think, we shouldn't think that things like being on time and working hard, that those are white things? You mean, you're saying that you mean everyone can do those things? It's quite extraordinary. Stu... You've been a conservative for a while. He's attacking you Republicans. Your, your eye's not on the ball. You should be worried about climate change. Yeah, I mean, this one even more specifically, he's attacking us. If he, we, he was made those comments in the context of the police acted stupidly, one of his first controversies as president. And he was talking quite clearly about all of our friends here, uh, Mr. Glenn Beck, who after that comment was famously on Fox and Friends yeah. and called the president a racist. And well, there's things I love about Glenn, uh, and one of them is uh, he will just kind of come out with it, even when he's not 100% locked in on exactly what he means. Well, he knows he's got a he's got a great instinct that something's going on, and it sometimes takes him a while to work through it. One of the reasons he's been so successful, he's in the Radio Hall of Fame, is because he works through that with the audience often. And what he was feeling out at that moment was critical race theory. It was this exact thing. I mean, he was criticized for saying, oh, well, it seems like Obama has a problem with the white culture. Go back to Obama's book. That's Those are the exact mm -hmm. words he uses, the white culture. And now the white culture, whiteness is evil, whiteness is terrible. It's so commonplace in our everyday discussions. 
it, it it doesn't even stand out. I mean, he really was on on the mark on something there, and and he you know has gone through a, a long struggle with that comment. But I think it, in in general sense, it's been vindicated pretty strongly. I mean, what is critical race theory except racism? Right, and the irony, of course, is that there are really no white people. I mean, I suppose a tiny sliver of sort of irrelevant people, but ma no mainstream white people are running around saying white is better. It's the critical race theory people that, in essence, are saying white is better because it means you're yeah. on time and you work hard and you know that two plus two equals four. And, and in effect, you don't judge people by the color of their skin. Uh, Dr. Gold, I know this isn't fully your, your area of expertise, um, but critical race theory, these ideas, they're leaking into everything. I mean, we're seeing them leak into the medical field, into the scientific disciplines, et cetera. What, what have you seen on that? I think it's right up our alley. Race theory has choice is back And when we start thinking into the medical the medical arena, medical education, scientific arena, these people came to mind theory. You know, if you think about cancer and let's just like everyone has to be very about the We don't go for a meritocracy all those who suffered. In all of it, certainly Washington State is Yeah, you know, Dr. Gold, your audio is popping in and out a little bit, so I'm not sure if everybody was able to hear that. So we'll we'll run a little test while I while I throw it back back to David. David, do you think we have the right tools? Let's say this this new sort of right alliance has the right tools to fight critical race theory effectively? I mean, it seems like we've just seen everything crumble under the weight of this. Well, it is crumbling under the weight of this, and it's just getting started. It's not gonna go anywhere anytime soon, and the power that we have is at the local level. The thing that is, uh, uh, is very alarming and should be alarming to every single viewer watcher is that there are individuals in the school boards that are approving uh, this, this doctrine that is literally teaching racism. Uh, and, and in order for us to literally take back the power, we've got to not only be informed, our, the parents in every school district around this country need to be informed as to who is making the decisions on, who is, on, on what curriculums are going to let into their schools, and then they've got to make changes. There's already, you know, it's, it, it led up to this. I think CRT was the first originated in 89. It's been growing for, you know, a couple decades, and it's reached this point where now it's kind of Introduction, introducing it into the mainstream curriculums of our schools and being widely accepted and being uh, approved, it sounds like, by Obama by dismissing it. The parents uh, of these kids need to get in their school board meetings, find out what's going on, replace the individuals that are okay with this kind of doctrine. That's the real power that we've got is parents uh, waking up, getting involved, and taking action. Yeah, well said. I, I do want to note also, by the way, in case Mara Gay, the New York Times op-ed lady is watching this show that I'm pretty sure the flag behind Harris is not meant to be a white supremacist flag. I know she saw some <laughs> flags on the Long Island. She saw some flags on the Long, Long Island Expressway. It freaked her out. Yep. Stu, Stu, we've talked about this a couple times on your show, but I sort of believe that it's kind of everyone versus the woke right now, that the conservative tent, in my opinion, has become very wide. Libertarians, traditional conservatives, more religious conservatives. I'm even seeing some atheist conservatives now that something really robust is happening on the right. Are, are you seeing that? I, I totally agree with you, and I think because it's so incredibly shocking. Right. You know, David made a great point. This started back in the late 80s, early 90s, where it rose to sort of an academic uh, prevalence. Uh, but it was not something we were talking about. It wasn't something we were thinking about. It wasn't something we were pushing back on. And then all of the sudden, it seemed this just crazy attitude became the mainstream and the only acceptable way to go. I mean, Ibram X. Kendi in his book literally advocates for discrimination as the yes. only solution for our past sins. He says we should discriminate. I mean, that is so far and away. I think we all thought, at least my whole life I did, that the vision of Martin Luther King, that basic sort of idea that we should be treated uh, you know, by the color, not against the, with the color of our skin, but the content of our character, that merit was the most important thing. That goes back to our founding. George Washington had, you know, gave out awards for merit. This is something this country has been based on forever. So the idea that we would just suddenly jam this in reverse 
And now we are required to think about race as often as Richard Spencer or David Duke and make that that central in our decision making process is so stunning, I think, to Americans of all stripes that there's people, you know, I think even on the left, a good chunk of the left that are saying, I I don't agree with conservatives on tax policy, but this goes way beyond that. Yeah, it seems to be far more about revenge than anything else. And it's actually kind of funny. You see those memes every now and again where they'll take what a white supremacist said 20 years ago, and and it's basically the exact same thing as what the woke left is pushing now. Uh, All right, Dr. Gold, hopefully your audio is a little bit better. Can you talk about how this is related to health equity? I mean, we saw even uh, in certain places like Seattle, they were giving out vaccines first to people of color. You know, Operation Warp Speed was filled with language. Uh, they were saying that they wanted to do commercials that featured attractive black people that, um, you know, again, as a doctor, I go with the science. The science showed that people with, obesity, people with diabetes, people with high sugar, those are the people at high risk, people with multiple comorbid conditions, people in nursing homes. Those are the people that should have been prioritized for vaccines. It was startling to read that they thought people of color or people of color who were attractive should be doing promotions. It was really shocking. I actually found it less completely racist. And I also find it very offensive when they keep talking about vaccine hesitancy as though that's you know, not a real thing. The truth is the government has done many, many um, scientific studies. There's certainly many, many others where black people were harmed due to vaccines at a higher rate than white people. In fact, I know it at least six. Mm-hmm. For measles, hepatitis B. And so then they trivialize it by saying that this is just quote unquote vaccine hesitancy, as though black people can't think for themselves. I find it very disturbing. Yeah, well, we've heard a lot of stuff like this. We've heard Joe Biden say black people apparently don't know how to get online. You ain't black if you don't vote for him. Uh, Harris, you've been able to get on the internet yourself? Man, I'm really not black, Dave. Uh, all right, well, I'm really not, must not be black. I've got an accountant. I've got a, I've got a tax person. <laughs> Whoa. I know how to use the internet. I built oh. my own business. I've been in business since I was 20. I just, yeah, Joe Biden's definition of black, I ain't it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, does Joe Biden know that there are black accountants and lawyers? But all right, put, put that aside. It's actually the, the, the right segue, what uh, Dr. Gold said there, to sort of the censorship version of all of this, because as you guys know, I mean, you go on Twitter, you don't know if you're seeing stuff that's manipulated or de-boosted or downgraded. We know about the Google algorithms and all that. Well, Twitter, their official at policy account, they put out probably the most ironic tweet in the history of the world, although every week there's like a new level of irony that we can get to. Uh, This is what they said regarding Nigeria just a few days ago. Uh, We are deeply concerned by the blocking of Twitter in Nigeria. Access to the free and open internet is an essential human right in modern society. We will work to restore access for those in Nigeria who rely on Twitter to communicate and connect with the world. Hashtag keep it on. Um, Now, the good people at Twitter, uh, as you know, have banned the former president of the United States. They banned probably about 100,000 people. It's hard to get the exact number uh, after the January 6th events. We know that conservatives are banned all the time for everything. Stu, you're still on Twitter. Are you just not edgy enough? What's going on? (laughs) Apparently not. (laughs) Apparently not. Um, First of all, we should point out that Twitter is not a human right. It is a human punishment. (laughs) Uh, It is a scourge (laughs) on all of our souls. It's Uh, a personal hell, I think. It's the equivalent of being struck by lightning. Uh, It is, uh, I mean, look, Twitter is obviously a way that we all uh, communicate, at least in the the hyper-political sort of realm. And, uh, you know, the, the instinct here, of course, is right. People should be able to say what they want to say. What, of course, as you point out, is the real issue here is the just unmitigated, undefen- indefensible hypocrisy of these types of statements. Twitter is has done the opposite of what they are claiming uh, to do. And they constantly push down this road where they want to have it both ways, where they want to say, look, we're a free speech platform, and this is what we're doing. We're changing the world. We're making a difference. And at the same time, they're shutting down anything uh, that is out of line with with the basic fact checker point of the day. And as we've seen this week, many of these get reversed. What happens yeah. to those people who lost their account six months ago, a year ago, for something that we now know is true? And the, the I guess the, the craziest part about this is Twitter doesn't have to put itself in this situation. Right. You know, they could easily when 
when uh, you know uh, Ayatollah says something bad on Twitter, I don't blame Twitter for that. I blame the Ayatollah for that, right? And so if Donald Trump says something they think is bad, well, then take it up with Donald Trump. He, he was the president of the United States. We should know what he's thinking if he's saying these terrible things. Right. They, they want to control the experience, I think, Dave. Yeah, and, and they, they're completely making a counter argument because if it's a human right, well, I, I think that Orange Man is human amongst the other people. <laughs> that they've, you know, maybe the orange thing is not so human. Dr. Gold, go ahead. So I don't know, people know me as a doctor, but I'm also a lawyer, so I really like this segment. So there's two parts. One is I can't wait to go into court of law and argue for Twitter that Twitter is saying that this is a human right. So that's a fantastic argument for me as a lawyer. I love it. And then the doctor part of me is really looking forward to the day when doctors can post government information such as VAERS screenshots for which my colleagues have been um, deplatformed, right? They, they'll post a picture of the vaccine adverse events reporting system screenshot of the deaths, and for that they're taken down. So, as a lawyer and a doctor, I was delighted to read this. Wait, let's go a little further with that lawyer part, because basically, if their argument is that they are, a, you know, a human right in effect, then they could be in a lot of hot water by their own words at this point. When somebody who gets kicked off says, "Hey, you're supposed to be an open platform," right? Exactly right. I honestly, I'm really not joking. I think it's an excellent little argument. They've already said that this, this is we are so fantastic. We no longer have to talk about First Amendment, this is, right? Like oxygen and water and food. Terrific. I'll take that case. Yeah. Harris, is it, a, is it a human right? I mean, really, the truth is, and I think this is sort of what Stu was saying, like, if Twitter blew up tomorrow, if their servers were just completely decimated, I actually think we'd all be a lot more functional. I think it's probably like <laughs> democracy. Democracy would be in better shape. Would I think people on. would smile more. We'd be OK. And by the way, we'd figure out other ways to communicate. When they say human right, it's because they want to keep us on these things all the time, right? Yeah, they, they absolutely do. It's not a human right. Um, it is their way of curating the truth and the news that they want their audience, you know, to to receive. I, uh, as as Simone shared, I actually did share a video of uh, one of the one of the Senate hearings in Texas where the uh, gentleman speaking, the doctor speaking, was sharing uh, the report from Vayers Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System on the amount of deaths. And I left it up on Instagram, I left it up on Facebook, I posted it on Twitter. Uh, I took it down about six hours later on Facebook and Twitter uh, and Instagram because they're, they're constantly threatening me to, to unpublish my pages. Yeah. And I forgot to take it down on YouTube and YouTube gave me a community strike. One more strike and I'm off of YouTube. So it's their way to curate, just as they've done for so many other things over the last couple of years. If what you're saying is not uh, cohesive with their mainstream media narrative, that they want the people to believe is the only option for us to think, basically don't think for yourselves, then you're the enemy. So yeah, if Twitter blew up tomorrow, life would go on and it would probably be a heck of a lot better for a lot of people uh, than it is right now. I think you all have to officially join me off the grid for August. You know, I locked that phone in a safe and I'm gone. I'm, I'm gonna, right before I go off this year, I'm gonna personally invite a few people publicly and I, I think you'll all be on the list. Uh, but I'll take the reverse side of this for a second. Stu, what do you think about this? That if we didn't, have these gatekeepers, I'm playing devil's advocate slightly, if we didn't have these gatekeepers and everyone could say whatever they want at all times, that the, the truth would even be further destroyed because no one would know who to trust at any level. This is not exactly what, what I believe. I'm just trying to give the devil his due here. No, I, and I think that's a, it's not an, a crazy point. You will have really wrong things be put out there, but that this goes against all of American history, right? Yeah. American history is, we started this country with, with just people accusing each other of crazy things, and we let the American people sort it out. I always think more voices are better than fewer, and we all often see this where, you, you know, one side of the argument wants to control what is allowed in a debate, and at the end of the day, you know, is it a human right? Well, you know, no one, no human had uh, this right before 2006. So I think it's somewhat <laughs> difficult to argue that it's a human right. And as you point out with your month off, seems to be your uh, happiest month of the year. Yeah. So I don't know that it's necessarily a wonderful thing for everybody. But there is this idea of open and honest debate. You should be able to say what you believe. And you should be able to have it be criticized by others in, a, in an open format. And if that's allowed, I think the American people wind up getting to the right place eventually. Stu, are you telling me, I'm, I'm looking here, are, are you telling me that the uh, 
Twitter as a human right was not guaranteed by the Bible or the Constitution? <laughs> <laughs> I've been looking for it. So far, there's almost no tweets in the Bible. <laughs> Somebody got my notes wrong here. Uh, all right, well, that, that, that's a good segue to the third story about hydroxychloroquine because a lot of what you've been talking about really for over a year now, Dr. Gold, you and some other doctors who in most cases were censored, uh, is starting to come out to be true. So I've got some quotes here from uh, Yahoo News. A new study shows that the controversial drug hydroxychloroquine touted by former President Donald Trump increased the survival rate of severely ill coronavirus patients. The observational study published by MedRxiv found that anti-malarial, the anti-malarial drug hydroxychloroquine along with zinc could increase the coronavirus survival rate by as much as nearly 200% if distributed at higher doses to ventilated patients with a severe version of the illness. Uh, and finally, we found that when the cumulative doses of two drugs, HCQ and AZM, were above a certain level, patients had a survival rate 2.9 times the other patients, the study conclusion states. Now, this is some stuff, Dr. Gold, that you've been talking about, a few other doctors have been talking about, and I remember when you started mentioning this, I, I think around last summer or so, we had a debate with my producers about having you and some of the other doctors on the show, and we thought, all right, well, we could literally just have our channel blow up and my business completely altered and everything else, and we didn't do it, so I'm glad that you're here now, but uh, how are you feeling about a little, a little vindication here? You know, I maybe listen to you read that study. And there was a study this time last year that came out of Detroit showing that hydroxychloroquine was very effective in report Detroit Hospital. And they buried that story the Friday before the third. And they had a week of doing that. There's more than 300 scientific studies that show promising <coughs> results and kind of early treatment. It's just one particular drug. There's multiple drugs that work. This is really the beginning. The nation of China was actually using chloroquine as early as February 2020. It's been all over the world, in Arabia, Italy, and everywhere, France, of course. So um, the disturbing thing to me, this is all a result of a lack of free speech. This entire issue is censorship. If American people could have heard both sides, they could have heard the truth from their doctors, media, both sides, we wouldn't be in this situation. But one side was very <laughs> You know, set of facts come out. There's now thousands and th tens of thousands of physicians like myself who tested for the fact that they're early. As you know, the test under all the tests find in fact of life. And anybody can look at how it's doing in the nation, in the continent of Africa. African death for 1% of the nation. Yeah, guys, I hope I, I hope you're hearing Dr. Gold a little bit better than I am. It's it's popping in and out there, so I apologize for that. We'll we'll try to clean it up for next time. Uh, but David, jumping off uh, what Dr. Gold just said there, I, th this idea now that you know the lab leak, we can suddenly talk about that. We couldn't talk about that a few weeks ago. You might have got booted for all those things, and the fact that even Yahoo. I mean, I, I sourced Yahoo here. They're even giving Trump credit for talking about this literally over a year ago. It seems like everything we're not allowed to talk about three months ago becomes true three months later. Yeah, all the conspiracy theories are uh, being proven true. It's like we don't have any more because they're all coming true. You know, I was somebody that was uh, slammed on all big tech from Facebook to Instagram to Twitter for talking about hydroxychloroquine and trying to share with the American people uh, the potential benefits that sounds like are now being proven and brought to light. And I really hope that it's just absolutely pissing. I hope I could say that, but pissing Americans <laughs> off at what's taking place Trust in me, our that's country not right the thing now. That's going to get me taken out. <laughs> yeah, probably won't be. But yeah. you know what? For 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 this country to have gone through what we've just gone through, to be pushing us towards getting the jab, if Fauci's now talking about by the end of the year we'll have kids as young as two years old getting the jab instead of Fauci talking about or any, anybody from the science and do doctor world, part of Biden's current administration, or whatever the task force is called now, talk about anything to, to remedy uh, the effects and the detriment of, of contracting COVID. They're just pushing this jab. I mean, to me, it's like, I really believe there's something a lot larger at stake here. There's something a lot bigger taking place uh, because it seems like a very coordinated effort from big tech from the swamp creatures like Fauci that were giving Donald Trump, uh, you know, the, his opinions on what should take place, to silencing voices, 
talking about any alternative to uh, to benefit the people. And we've lived through an absolute catastrophe. I mean, it's so many people are gone. People have died. Uh, people have lost family members, couldn't visit their family members, members in hospitals or in old folks' homes. Uh, it's absolute travesty. Probably will go down to one of the worst things that ever happened in this country, and it was avoidable. And I really hope Americans are getting pissed off. Yeah, I, I think I think they're. Yeah, Dr. Gold, go ahead. I, I have to jump in because we outlined it. You probably don't know, but hot off the press yesterday, America's frontline doctors filed a very severe serious lawsuit in the 11th district in Alabama and we outline the entire thing we outline the collusion that's gone on the censorship that's gone on the lack of access to early treatment we've named names about people with conflict of interest you can find that on page 94 96 in the complaint it's all there we've laid out the whole case for the American people to see and you can find it on our website America's frontline doctors.org you can find it on our website Okay, we'll, we'll add the link Good. to that in the description below so people can find it. But let me, let me ask you one other thing before I get to Stu, which is in, in terms of Fauci, you know, I, I've been pretty critical of him. I, I wasn't for a long time because I was just trying to listen like everybody else and I'm not the expert. But after this email leak where we literally hear him saying to, pe to a friend of his who asked him about masks, oh, well, in effect, masks don't work, the masks that you buy at the store. While at the same time, basically that week, he's telling people, oh, maybe double mask. Like, do you what level of credit or or trust should we have in him at this point? You should have none. We have Fauci flip flops on our website where we outline the flip flops that he makes on a weekly basis. He reverses himself. He's a political animal. I like you did not criticize him heavily in the beginning. I've watched. I've waited. He, he's double talk. He's like a politician, and it's really really harming the American people. It's harming people across the world. He's really culpable for a lot of death. We've outlined it very clearly in the lawsuit, and we hope that him and others are held back. <coughs> Stu, I know you could do a good Star Wars reference. I mean, he literally said a day or two ago that an attack on him is attack on science, which is very Palpatine, I am the same kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. um, when, when, beyond doing your show, when you're doing Glenn's radio show, you know, a couple hours a day, you guys do four hours a day? Is that four? Three, uh, th four? Yeah, three on radio and then and, one on TV. Yeah. Right, so four hours a day, and you've got to cover this stuff and also be worried about not getting booted off everything. How have you tried to navigate what you're allowed to talk about here? Well, you know, I mean, I think it's funny because you look at, I think it's one of the strangest things of the past year, and it's been a really freaking weird year. <laughs> but the, the idea that a medicine could become a partisan mm -hmm. issue is such a strange concept. It's like, you're talking about medicine, you want R&D to stand for research and development, not Republicans and Democrats. <laughs> um, so it's one of those things where like, we, you know, you should, you should be able to do these things if you want to do them. You know, it's like freedom is always the answer. I, you know, I'm, I'm probably more pro uh, the vaccines than a lot of people uh, in the audience. I think they've, you know, I think it's performed pretty well so far and I'm glad Operation Warp Speed existed and I'm glad we're seeing the end of this, I hope. On the other side of that, there's a lot of people who disagree with me. They shouldn't be forced to take them like they shouldn't be pulled off the market for me to take them. It's so it's so interesting that on our side of the aisle, these conversations are easy mm -hmm. because the answer is always freedom. You choose what you choose. I choose what I choose. It makes America great. We live with the consequences and we go on. It's hard to navigate, I think, when you get into this idea of big tech because you never know where they're going to crack down. You don't know what they're going to what what thing you say is going to get you kicked off, and you know the Dave Rubin channel is going to be gone. All you can do is be honest and talk about what you believe, and uh, you know and try to understand that there is some uncertainty on some of these things. Uh, but at the end of the day, you're not going to be able to please Mark Zuckerberg. You're not going to be able to please Jack. They're going to do what they do. We better make our own uh, places to go as well so we can get this information out, which is what we try to do with Blaze TV. Yeah. Stu, sounds like you hey, want to kill Grandma. I got it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, Dr. <laughs> Stu, Gold, I got a just, shirt for you, can, brother. Dr. Gold, yeah. can you just talk about the uh, uh, the vaccine in general? For the, for the people that are maybe on the fence right now, what information would you want them to know about the vaccine? Or the vaccines, I should say. Are you asking me, Dave? I assume. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I agree completely that this is a free choice. One of the things we're seeing going wrong is that there's not voluntary informed consent. Informed consent overwhelmingly does not exist. Do may have gotten it, but overwhelmingly people are not getting informed consent. People don't understand that this is experimental. And it's clearly moving away from being voluntary. When we see governors of various states offered free money, free scholarships, free ice cream, when we see local municipalities say that 12 year olds can consent without their parents consent or knowledge. We're talking about treading into very, uh, you know, involuntary territory. That's our concern, is the fact that it needs to be voluntary, it needs to be informed, people need to be told it's experimental, and to be true informed, 
need to understand children are at zero risk of death from 19. You can't be giving children experimental medication. We're literally treating America's children like they're guinea pigs. This has never happened in America. It's terrible. Yeah, uh, Harris, I'm going to give you the last word here. Going, going off that, I mean, freedom. Are we going to keep it or are we just throwing it away? Bring us home with that scary American flag behind you. We, yeah, yeah, me the racist. Uh, we need to keep freedom as the main choice. We need to keep it uh, as uh, we need to champion it is what we need to do. I was in New York City last week walking through Central Park with a T-shirt that I had designed that I was hoping liberals would love. Oh, Here I it saw is, it. Dave. <laughs> I saw it. A little higher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. My it. body, my choice. That is what it should all be about. It's our decision. <laughs> People are being forced to get the jab. People are being threatened with their jobs or livelihoods if they don't get the jab. It, 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 the phrase fits in this narrative, which if you like that shirt, you can get it at davidharrisjr.store. Uh, but people should not be forced, especially when all these vaccine companies have complete uh, uh, anonym, have complete uh, there's no no potential for repercussions. They they can't be sued if anything goes wrong, uh, and we're not being told exactly what it what the damages are from bears. Uh, that information is not out there. So we need to champion freedom. Uh, we need to wear wear whatever we're going to wear proudly to show Americans what we believe. We need to take action. We need to get involved at the local level, and we need to make sure that we take this country back from the progressives, uh, leftists that are trying to just push socialism and communism literally on our children and on the rest of us. We got to stand up and do us right, Dave. Excellent closing statement, my friend. Well, I thank the three of you for doing the show. Uh, Dr. Gold, we are going to link to that uh, case right down below the website. Uh, thank you guys. I'm going to I'm going to finish up with a little monologue of my own. But you guys are now free to enjoy your weekend. So thanks for joining me. Thank um, you, Dave. Thanks, Dave. Love you, brother. Yeah, my pleasure, my pleasure. Thank you, guys. Uh, guys, I wanted to finish up this week. Well, first off, I should tell you, because I know a whole bunch of you have been asking me on social media, I did have part one of a root canal yesterday, an emergency root canal. I was in a lot of pain during the show yesterday, but somehow managed to pull it off, but my face was like ready to explode. Uh, so I got a little something, they drilled in, they did something, I have to, it's like a two or three part uh, procedure, but I'm gonna be okay. The pressure has been relieved, I will, survive and I ate a big steak last night so I was even able to chew so there you go on that um, my main takeaway of the week putting aside all of these stories is really what happened uh, at Long Island's Nassau Coliseum a couple days ago that we covered uh, with uh, Nikki Revive the the singer songwriter singing the national anthem and basically you know sort of putting the microphone down and letting those thousands of people uh, in Nassau Coliseum sing the national anthem, how absolutely moving it was. I mean, when I said on the show that I got chills up my spine watching it, I was not kidding, I was not being sarcastic or hyperbolic. My, my guys in the studio here said the exact same thing. My assistant uh, texted me right after saying she got chills up her spine and then I did go into the YouTube comments and I looked and tons of you said the exact same thing. That is literally, guys, our bodies sending us a message about what is true and what is good and what is right and what is just. That that's the spirit we need to take this thing back. Uh, as you know, if you watched the show earlier uh, in the week, I grew up 15, 20 minutes barely from Nassau Coliseum. I went to many Islanders games there games there over the year. I went to WWE. I think I was at a WrestleMania event there. I saw, I saw Hulk Hogan there once uh, and Jake the Snake Roberts and a bunch of other guys. Like I went there a long time. My sister went to college right by there. Like I know these people that were there. These are good Americans. Nobody, literally nobody in that stadium was singing the national anthem because it had anything to do with racism. And I think that if we're gonna take this stuff back, it's not just, you know, we gotta do it locally and in our family as we, as we always talk about here. And I think really is the, the first key to the answer. The other key to the answer is like, be proud, like actually be proud and, and fight for this country while we still have a chance to fight. And I hope that at every sporting event, uh, if people, you know, if the athletes, the millionaire athletes who get to play a sport for a living, which any of us in our right mind would love to like play a game that we love and get paid millions of dollars to do, if they want to kneel because of this unjust nation, well then they can kneel and the, and the owners can decide whether they want those players on their teams. And, and that's the beauty of freedom and free markets. But I think for all of us that love this country, man, when you go to a public event and they sing the national anthem, sing the freaking national anthem. Fly a flag, uh, you know, whatever it is that you could do in your life because this amazing, precious thing 
Uh, it shouldn't, this, this is the point, it shouldn't cause tingles up your spine uh, to hear the national anthem sung because for generations we would hear the national anthem sung and it didn't seem, maybe it didn't seem that important, that's not quite the quite right uh, way to say it. It's, it was always important, but now the freedom that's behind that song and those words feels tenuous, right? It feels like we're giving it away and that it's just, or, or it's slipping away or it's being taken away. So be like those people. I love you, Long Island. I'm telling you, I was so proud, proud to, to be from Long Island. And like, I was looking at the people in the crowd. It's like, I know those people. Th those are my people. Those are good people. And those are your people if you're proud of America too. So don't be like the New York Times op-ed writers and don't be like MSNBC hosts and don't be like these, these charlatans who are pushing critical race theory and equity and Marxism and the destruction of America on all of us. Be better. And it ain't that hard because they're pretty terrible. On that note, guys, uh, have a great weekend, everybody. I've, I've got a few more interviews today. We're, we're pre-taping a little bit because I am gonna be in Miami next week uh, for about five days. I'm interviewing uh, Mayor Francis Suarez, who is the phenomenal mayor of Miami, who is just transforming that city into a tech hub. And I have a bunch of meetings about uh, locals. We got a lot cooking there I'm really excited about. And I think we'll do a, uh, a locals meetup. So if you wanna actually meet me and have a drink in Florida, uh, rubenreport.locals.com. All right, have a great week, everybody. Fly that flag, that freak flag, the American flag, all the flags, N but not that crazy gay rainbow flag. It's just awful. They added the brown and the pink, and it's just, it's, they ruined the rainbow. They actually ruined the rainbow. American flag, much better than that other flag. All right, have a good weekend, everybody.